Loud. All right, welcome once again, everybody. It is our RUAC Spoon Challenge number 20, Show and Tell. Uh, this, uh, this template was provided by our very own George Georg, who uh, created a fabulous uh, cooking spoon template um, with a couple different variations as part of the template. So. Uh, I'll, I'll let George kind of speak to his design and give us a quick introduction and then we'll we'll kick off with our show and tell as per usual please keep yourselves muted until you are called upon to do your show and tell uh, and please you know if anybody here needs to go early on uh, just you know raise your hands and uh, so I can see who who like needs to, to step up to the plate sooner rather than later. Um, but with that, we'll go ahead and turn it over to George. Let me turn on the spotlight to you, George. And uh, here we go. Yes, hello. Um, yes, thank you for everyone who was copying my template. I was really honored and thrilled and seeing all these spoons. And yeah, that was a really, uh, really nice thing. And um, I get a lot of response about the making spoon mule X work video and so that was really nice um yeah thanks to my camera women again and thanks to kevin at this point he was doing a fabulous job to make that video a good one i think and yeah the spoon we i was doing um it was this was the original spoon um it's just a cooking spoon i made a few weeks ago and um then there was this one in and I didn't know which was also a nice one I made a few weeks ago and I was not sure which one I liked more. So I, Sunny, thank you, Sunny, uh, made this template, which is a mixture out of this spoon and that spoon. Um, I like to do like swoopy things like cooking spoons. And I think the template was something about that, like a simple form with a lot of swoop and I like to do this little bumpy thing here uh, which is not really a hook to to hang the spoon somewhere but it's just preventing pre that the spoon is not sliding into the pot maybe and it's um, also like quite comfortable to just hold it in your hand so I like to do that a lot um, so and normally I don't use templates so I made quite a few of these spoons in, in the last three weeks and always make quite a variation in that. So like this, uh, like I, here I tried more asymmetric or just very long or really swoopy and smaller or just funny backflip on the spoon or just small one, or just really beautiful wood. Yeah, and so on. So I, I made it, I think it's the first time that I played around with just one form for such a long time. This is more like a level thingy, really deep. And I really enjoyed to stick to it a little bit and just trying to find more and more variations in this is this is beginning to feel like the car commercial with the, like 50 people climbing out of a Volkswagen bug. <laughs> yeah, and this is even a spoon number 20. Wow. Yeah, crook, out of plum. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. And serving spoons as well. So, yeah, I was maybe overdoing it a little bit, but. <laughs> Yeah. No, George taking things to extreme? Never. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so I, had, I had a lot of fun with this template the last three weeks and made a few of them. And I, I, I'm really happy with the spoons. I, I don't know, you probably all know this feeling when you just carve something and you, you, it's done and you think, oh, that's nice. You know, sometimes you're really happy with what you did. So, and yeah, I, I, from, I can say for myself that I made a few spoons I'm really happy with. And so that's what I liked about this whole thing. Yeah, and well, that's you should be. There, 
They're spectacular spoons. And for any of you out there who, who don't actually own a George spoon, uh, George, I think, might have a few that he'd be willing to sell if you were to reach out to him or possibly even trade. Um, but I am sure. the lucky recipient of three George spoons. And I have to tell you that they are, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the spotlight back off of you again, George, for a second yeah. here and go back to my gallery view. Um, it, it is really almost impossible to describe how, for me anyway, how elegant with that that's always the word that I, I use when I'm describing George spoons they're, they're just elegant they're svelte they're trim they're super clean uh the the thinness that he gets at this you know transition from the handle into the bowl it, it, it there there's strength there it's super strong but it, it just looks so freaking tiny and delicate and so you know, when I was trying to carve my number 20 spoons, I was, in my mind, I was like, I'm going for that level of George delicacy and, and elegance and thinness and but delicate, not in the negative pejorative sense, De you know, but, but an appearance of delicance, deli an appearance of, man, my, my words are failing me here. What was the word? Delicate, <laughs> of an appearance of delicateness, but with strength. Delicacy. Delicacy, thank you. Um, and they are a delicacy. Uh, anyway, but, but yet yeah, mine always end up feeling very chunky. And like, it's, like, I even got this one super thin. You can't see it with the light, but it, like I can see through it. And I thought I got it like super thin. I was afraid I was going to carve through the bottom of it. And yet when I feel it in my hands compared to George, I'm still probably twice as thick as George's is, and my, my neck to handle transition is close, but it's not anywhere. Like, so mine are like the dwarven version of George's beautiful elven, you know, sylvan elven spoons, uh, to, to use my Lord of the Rings analogies. Anyway, enough of my waxing eloquent, uh, but yes, get, get yourself a George spoon if you don't own one, because it, it, they're, as beautiful as they are to look at in photographs, they're even more amazing when you get them in your hands. Um, so thank you very much, Chuck. Every uh, always for us, Rob. <laughs> oh, and oh, and also, I really want to say, George is uh, of the folks on here, probably uh, other than Rachel, perhaps one of our longest term uh, Rise Up and Carve members. In fact, I think we just recently, in the month of April past your two year anniversary from the time that you first logged on to Rise Up and Carve. Um, and, and I gotta tell you, it's been a huge, huge pleasure having George as part of our, our Rise Up and Carve community. He is always uh, enthusiastic, has incredible knowledge, incredible skill as his demo, uh, you know, made apparent to all of us. Um, and yeah, so thank you so much, George for, you know, and in fact, George offered not only our Ruax Spoon Challenge number 20, but he was also the second template. So he has two and 20 to his credit at this point. So go back and try uh, Ruax Spoon Challenge number two if you haven't. All right, with that. Thank you, I want to hear, welcome. hold on, I want to hear what was George's total? Because he originally said he was going to try to carve 20 number 20s and he went way over that. Uh, I'm somewhere 40 something. 40 something. <laughs> Yeah, it's awesome. That's amazing. Absolutely he, spectacular, my friend. Well and done. He told, and he told us something he didn't say now, that one of the things he was doing was trying to show people all the different sizes and shapes you could carve the template and still make a usable spoon. So he was trying to do a service by illustrating the variety of shapes, too. So I thought that was cool. So it appears to me that we have just about 30 people logged on here and George carved 40 number 20s. So I'm pretty sure George was offering that if you all just DM him your address, that he will send out a number 20 spoon to you for free. <laughs> yeah, it, it, the shipping is a little bit much because there are so many people from the UK and the US. So that's a little bit- You, you might not get it for another four or five years. But <laughs> just kidding. George, <laughs> can I ask you a question? 
bearing in mind the experience that you've had having chosen that template, would you would you do it again? And is there a template you'd like to explore more in the future? Do you know what I mean? You've, you've not, never probably stuck with one shape for so long and you've said that you've learned a bit from it. So I was just wondering whether that's made you interested in doing it again. Um, sure, I think um, uh, I think it's maybe with uh, the, sa the same with style. You know, I was always, when in the beginning of spoon carving, you think, oh, I have to find my style. What is my style? And and suddenly someone's told me, a friend who was, I was carving for a long time with, he said, you already have your style. You know, you, you can see all your spoons. They are like this and like that. So um, why are you asking for a style? Because you already have. So, and I was always saying, no, I, I never use a template. I always just draw it like it comes in my mind. And, um, and maybe now I have a template, which I again and, and again will like repeat. Um, and sure, I, I'm not tired of this spoon. Um, and um, I, I try to, to um, make a photo of all the 41, but I haven't posted yet. So maybe I, when everybody's talking, maybe I can post it on so that you can see all the variations. And um, no, it's definitely not getting boring. And um, it's, um, it's just a nice, nice form, I think. So maybe it's a little bit like fits my style of carving that I just naturally always will do that thing, probably. Awesome, great if question. It, if it, the answer. <laughs> By the way, folks, I also want to point out that in, in case you don't know, George is a jeweler by trade. He, he makes a fantastic jewelry. And this, I don't know if you can see it, but he does uh, a lot of really, really cool stuff with uh, a Japanese technique. Uh, what's it called again, George? Uh, Mokomegane. Right. And it's this blending of different metals to make these gorgeous like rings and, and pieces that he does. So, you know, definitely give George a follow if you don't already follow him and check out his, his jewelry work as well, because it's stunning. So the, the, the Mokome says a wood pattern in metal. That's a trans, translation. Really cool. So it was all right. Normal. Yeah. No wonder that I some, sometimes go to the wood carving from metal work. Uh, yep. <laughs> Makes perfect sense to me. All right, with that, I think we should probably get going here. So uh, if somebody, is there anybody here who really needs to, to go early on because you can't stick around? Uh, if so, raise your hand and I'll, I'll let you go. Otherwise, just, it's a free for all. Put up. Who wants to go first? Wave your hand so I can see you. All right, I'm gonna have to just call until, all right, John, was that a hand wave? All right. Then I will, uh, uh, you're going to have to unmute yourself. I will spotlight you and you can uh, share your number 20. Okay. Are you unmuted? I hope so. Yep, there you are. We hear you. Um, yeah, okay. So um, what's up? What do you want to know? So did you carve a number 20? Oh, yeah, it looks like this. Awesome. Yep, you got to hold it up higher so it's in the camera. Ooh, that's really neat. What is that? Is that a carved and then painted on there or? Yeah, it's a, it's a little um, sort of an egg. And uh, this over here. It's my maker's mark. Nice. Look at that uh, uh, little, where it went up like that, and I thought, yeah, I got to do something to it. And That's I, really cool. I like, like it a lot. I use an egg or a ball or on, on a, a finials on a lot of my spoons, and I always paint them red. So I like red. I like finial balls and things like that. And uh, this is um, butternut. It was real close to the pith. I don't know if you can see that here. 
Yeah. So I took a chance on it and it didn't it didn't uh didn't split or anything when it dried out, so it came out looking pretty nice. Yeah, it looks fantastic. And uh I tried burnishing for the first time. Okay. And so uh, I was searching around for something to burnish with, and I got the bright idea, well, I'll use the uh, burnisher I use on my scraping cards. Ah. It worked great. You know, it's awesome. Made especially hard metal for burnishing. So, now, do you have a, a spoon mule, or do you do everything just with axe and, and, and knife? Like, do you use a draw knife in your work I at all? Cut out, I, I cut out the blank on my bandsaw. Okay. I don't do a lot of uh, axe work. Uh, okay. I have arthritic shoulder problems. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, hey, you know, you use the, you use whatever tool you need to use to get the job done. So that's good. It will take a lot of wood off in a hurry. And there's my spoon mule. Nice. And whoops. Beautiful shop. And there we go. Spoon mule and chopping block in the shop. Excellent. Yeah, I've got a fairly well equipped shop. Um, I say a fourteen inch bandsaw with a with a riser on it. I can rip up to eleven inches. Um, a chop saw, um, little table saw, and uh, a chainsaw. Yeah, electric chainsaw. There you go. I really want to hog something big. I just take out my electric chainsaw. So this was great. Uh, absolutely wonderful pattern and very fun to carve. And uh, I got about a half a dozen more roughed out and ready to be finished up and go on the table for the next show, whenever the heck that will be. I don't know. Awesome. Well, congratulations, and that's an awesome job. You did, you did fantastic with it. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask if so. Somebody's, somebody's driving their car and listening? Yeah, Alan. <laughs> Is the painting... Um... Hey, Alan, you, you, ought to be, you ought to be carving a spoon while you're driving the car and watching the... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Sean? Hmm? Is the painting... Um... Acrylic or is it uh, what kind of paint did you use? It's really shiny. Oh, the paint. Well, it's um, it's artist acrylic and it's got a half a dozen coats of polyurethane on it. So uh, the polyurethane is what makes it shiny, and I like shiny. Nice. Any other questions? Comments? If not, then show of hands. Uh, all right, Florian. Hey everyone. Uh, this time I actually finished a spoon. Um, this is my number 20. Ooh, nice. I got into a bit of a pickle, so it's carved from hazel and it started to crack up here, which is why I had to make the uh, uneven um, front of the bowl. Asymmetric. Asymmetric bowl, yeah. And then I uh, got a crack down here as well. And then I had to carve it a bit shorter. And while I was carving it shorter, I kind of had like one shoulder there and I liked it. Then I carved the other shoulder. So I ended up with this type of spoon shape. Nice. What kind and of one is it? Hawthorne, Second. did you say? Hazel. Hazel, that was it. And I went for some, because I did go for some, uh, let me actually shine a light through it. I went quite thin. Oh, yeah. So I did leave a little bit thicker here, made some nice, uh, oh, God, I can't facets. remember the words today. Facets, yeah, that's the word. Yeah. To at least give it some rigidity around the edges. Excellent. And I uh, continued the facets all the way to the back. Yeah, I like it a lot. It's really nice. 20. Wait. There you go. Ruag number 20. Right. Beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's I it. didn't realize hazel was such uh, white wood, very pale colored wood. Yeah, it is very, very uh, pale. Um, but actually, 
if you like you can maybe see it this is where the um so if you put oil on it and then rub it with uh um coffee powder then it actually the all the grain picks up the coffee powder uh -huh. and it gets like interesting uh, grain pattern cool um yeah but it also has like really nice um yep if you can i don't know if you can see it yeah i can see it the the grain structure is actually not uh quite nice it's really pretty it almost reminds me of, of like holly in in some and because it's got such a whiteness to it but i don't mm -hmm. know if that's more the camera and the lighting or if it's no, it is very that, that white it is very white yeah, yeah. Very, very light and it's actually surprisingly sturdy so i don't know hazel got it, it turned out like when i mean hazel is a wood that i used to carve when i was, was little a lot because it's so very soft when you um, cut it off the tree mm. and but i had this really big um trunk of hazel um and it got really hard which is quite nice for a spoon obviously yeah so um whenever i can get my hands on, on hazel i will carve more of it i think because it carves really nicely and it gets really hard so that's kind of cool yeah it takes a beautiful finish it looks like really nice Awesome job, fantastic, well done. Uh, anybody have any questions or comments for Florian? Oh yeah, and uh, obviously thanks George. First of all, thank you for sending me a spoon. Uh, it, it was really helpful to have your spoon while I was carving this spoon, so. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice, uh, nice template and um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna get back to it, but my kids have holidays and I feel like I have no time whatsoever while the kids have school holidays. Yeah. So I'm glad I got this done before the school holidays. Excellent. Well done. And thank you so much. All right. Who would like to go next? Wave a hand, please. All right. Sean Tillett. Let me spotlight you real quick. Marvelous. Uh, until that one arrives. This is my number 20. Uh, quite a flat piece of wood. Um, and when I saw it, I, I looked at the, the lump on the back and I just thought it looked like it was going to be really uncomfortable, but I was just shocked at how tactile it is to hold. Yeah. Um, like Florian, I've done a, a lot of facets all the way around nice. the bowl, up the back, um, including on the, on the lump itself. It just really lends itself nicely. Um, yeah, so this is going to go to the neighbour that gave me the piece of cherry that it's from. So that's really nice. Excellent. Yeah, it's, uh, obviously... <laughs> that's great. <laughs> you see, uh, earrings. These are, I've decided to call them the uh, world record holding salad serving, hand carved salad servers. And you always have them to hand to serve salad. That's great. <laughs> and up comes the salad. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Love it. Well, that's perfectly, uh, that, that is an, an absolute perfect thing considering George's actual trade. <laughs> so <laughs> I have had to take them on because it turns out that my ear piercings I did when I was 16 are shut. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Excellent. Well done, Sean. Spectacular. <laughs> All right. Let me go. Go back to gallery view. Uh, who would like to go next? Nancy, I see that you are waving, and then I saw Jurgen. So let's go, Nancy, first. Let me spotlight you real quick. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going now because I'm going to have to sign off early. I think I have many chores today. No worries. Um, this is my uh, second challenge, and I did mine out of mimosa. Ooh. And really I, really, I really loved the form, and the wood was so pretty. Yeah. So, um, Beautiful, job. great. I I really enjoyed watching um, George's demo. I also did a little companion spoon. That's that. Um, I loved watching George draw his spoon. So on this one, I didn't use the template. I just drew it. 
trying to kind of mimic the way George drew it. And I didn't put the foot on it. So this yeah. one's in bir this one's in birch, and I painted it. And this one is in mimosa. Very nice. That mimosa is really striking wood. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Um, yeah. And my, make sure my you make sure you tag your picture with the KH grain challenge for that one. That, that's a contender. Yeah, I could. Um, and I was inspired and I found um, in a community page here, someone was selling a spoon mule and I bought it. So nice. I now have a spoon mule, which I find I have arthritic hands and it's really nice to use the two hands and use the uh, draw knife. And um, I have a little, um, what is it called? Spoke shave. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, really loving how that contributes to um, the ease of getting the form, the rough form done. Absolutely. Yeah. It takes a lot yeah. of stress and strain off of the hands and wrists. Uh, it's definitely uh, the way to go. Yeah. And George, thank you so much. It was great. It's great connecting with you on, on Rise Up and Carve and learning um, from you and, and watching you spew out these spoons in uh, record time. It's so much. Thank you. Thank you yeah. and welcome. Yeah, good. Okay, that's me. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nancy. Any questions or comments from anyone? Okay, then I will go back to gallery view. And Jurgen, I believe we said you were going to be next. All right. Um, there we go. Yeah, so the, the one here, one of them. Nice. With, uh, Ooh, I like the chevrons. Lighting is. Very cool. Very nice. That was one. I did that one. And then. Um, and what kind of wood was that? These are all. I had a. I have a little supply of uh, black walnut. Nice. It's a. It's probably not as green as I would like, but it's still black walnut. Still carvable, even when it's a little drier. Yep. Um, and then did another one without the the hook into a little flatter side as a cooking utensil in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Use that one. And Beautiful. Left that one plain. Oh, can then, you show the back of that again? I like the way you swooped in uh, on the back of the bowl towards the handle. Yeah, nice. Really nice. I like that a lot. And then um, did another one here. This one's on the, and this one, uh, um, this one's going to be a part of a. I'm making a, another one. That's not going to mimic this one. And this one's going to end up being for a salad uh, server. Nice. So it's a little flatter. And I've started a, another one that I'm just going to duplicate this and maybe just do a little in to make it a part of a yep. salad. I've uh, often wondered, why is it, like, why can't you just use two spoons? Like, why, why do salad servers have one that's like, you know, got a, carved out section in the bowl as opposed to I guess just... I, I don't know maybe somebody can tell me but it's either going to be exactly duplicate like that or I'm going to put a little I started this the other one already that's going to I'm just going yeah. to du going to duplicate it but this one's not done but we'll nice. end up. so I'll have four basically using that template I, I like the sh it's a nice shape I love the shape and uh, my wife's like ah make a make this um, salad servers out of them. Yeah, I had the same idea. It's, it's a great idea. I love your chip carving along the handle there. It's really nice, beautifully done. Yeah, that, it was the first time trying it on the, the edge. Very uh, nice, it, I like that. It was after, after doing Sebastian's uh, yeah. templates, doing three of those with the chip carving. Some, for some reason, yeah. I just felt like I had to do some, some chip carving on it. <laughs> nice. So uh, beautiful. Thanks. That's Great it. job. Excellent. Well done, Jurgen. Any questions or comments for Jurgen? All right. 
Let me switch back to gallery view and show of hands. All right, Joan. So um, I couldn't make it three weeks ago for the show and tell there. So I'm going to make up for it today. I've got a, a 20, a 19, and a 14 because awesome. I've got a couple years worth, I guess, to catch up on. But um, so here's my 20. This is made out of elm. Ooh, beautiful. And my goal here was to try and capture both the heartwood and the sapwood because I'd never actually done that before in any of my spoons. And this you was such, so, well. so striking, the, yeah. uh, the contrast between the, the two. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Um, wow. But I love the. It, yeah. You got it placed I, perfectly. That's really, really nicely done. So I would love to hear um, from others because what I found doing this was that the, the real contrast in the colors threw off my eye and I had a really hard time with symmetry because of it. So I'd love to hear what other people do because boy, I found that really, it really confused my eye. But I love the way it came out and my family calls this the vanilla and chocolate ice cream spoon. So yeah, so I was beautiful. Happy. I was happy with this. So that's Elm. Um, and then um, I, um, you know, was so far behind. Did, did, did back in like half an hour, I joined my. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mute my. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so thank thank ahead, you, John. George, because I think this is a a great spoon and one that um, my family will really love using. Um, so number nine. This is my number nineteen. Um, nice. This is, this is out of crab apple, and I will say I just had so much fun doing this because um, I certainly like like many others had never done chip carving before and um, and like everybody else I couldn't figure out what colors to use so I used yeah. all so I used all of them um, and you can see I made a rainbow spoon with the, uh, the red orange yellow green the different so I don't know if, if you saw together. But Florian just made a comment in the chat about for the, the challenge with the symmetry and the, the change in the color and grain kind of throwing your eye off. Because I experienced the same thing with walnut, uh, black walnut with a strong contrast between the heart and the sapwood. It can definitely play with your symmetry in your eye. And so Florian's suggestion is to hold it up against a very bright sky or a bright light when you're checking for the symmetry to look mm -hmm. at the silhouette. Um, and, and that way the, the grain you know, comes less into play. Yeah, I also, I, I sometimes also like to to play around with that. So here, because the the um, hard wood is not really in the center, um, I I um, unintentionally do a asymmetric bowl because mm. and just try to to get uh, get it just nice looking, but not even. So I don't know how to explain that. So it's it's much rounder here, it's much straighter there. And mm -hmm. I think that's just interesting to play with that, especially when you have these um, um, tangential spoons with the hardwood in the middle. So, well, this, yeah. this, this one definitely ended up being asymmetric, although I wasn't necessarily going for that, but, um, but I love the mm -hmm. contrast. And, and and thanks thanks to Sebastian for this because I, I can't tell you how much fun I had. I haven't done a little painting project like this since my kids were in elementary school and we were. It came out beautifully. Yeah, so that was really really fun. And then the, because I really love the chip carving so much, so I did a uh, it sort of by chance a number fourteen, which was the grain challenge, and that's where you can incorporate some sort of wood element and showcase it. So. I, a friend gave me a piece of Vitek, which is a chaste bush. Um, and I was trying to carve a little ladle, but I ended up with this enormous um, uh, knot uh, oh, wow. in the bowl. And so I don't know if you can see it in the picture, but I carved a, I did a relief carving of a fish. And I used that as the eye. Oh yeah, brilliant. I see that there. Um, really cool. So that was very, very fun. So again, thanks for the chip carving because I never would have thought of doing this otherwise. Nice. Great so those, job, Joe. So those are my three. I am slowly catching up. Absolutely. Fantastic job. And you're only one year behind, by the way. We didn't, we started the, actually, you're not, it's only like three quarters of a year. Or no, I guess we're closing. I think it was July last year when we first started doing the templates. So. And it looks like we're going to come in somewhere right around 22 total in, in the course of a year. So, uh, yeah, so you're catching up. 
Hey, awesome. there's a couple of there's a couple of tricks I use for I know how that grain can 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 mess with your sense of symmetry. One, like Florian said, if you hold it up to a bright sky or a bright wall. Another thing is sometimes if you hold it upside down or turn it around or look at the back, you see a wonky spot. Somehow, when you some for some reason upside down it looks wonky and right side up it looks right. And another trick is to use the templates. Is the templates don't fall the victim to mm. the trick in your eye and you can make a stiff template out of cardboard so if your spoon is got a curve to it the stiff you know holding the stiff template up and 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 and, and viewing down at it can show you where your spoon has gone outside of the template so those are the only tricks i have but i get that that happens a lot yeah Definitely. Also, Julian um, mentioned he, in the in the chat. He said he, he wasn't able to jump in, but he had some advice yeah. just before. Are you there, Julian? Yeah, I'm here. I can I can talk about it now. Go for so, it. Let's say you got a spoon like this, not too dissimilar from yours, with the. Oh. Um, there we go. Um, <laughs> my daughter's already drawn on this spoon, so just putting that aside. Um, what you can do is take a pencil and use your finger gauge on the edge like this, just draw a line right on the edge of the spoon, right? Obviously you, you do this before the, before you're like doing your finishing cuts. This is while you're just establishing, establishing the shape. And now you've made a very handy visual indicator of your shape and any problem areas are gonna immediately jump out to you and you can quickly fix them and another thing that, that this achieves is, is that your finger, using your finger gauge in that way will naturally smooth, it, smooth out any lumps and bumps. So you can see the discrepancy between your pencil line and what the wood actually looks like. And, and any of those areas that aren't perfectly bared, to use a, a, a boat building term, will, mm. will stick out to your eye. And that's a, this is a trick that I use constantly. I, I draw my lines several times throughout the whole, whole process of carving. Any time where I want to get my eye in and, and approach a smoother or a more pleasing form, I draw my lines again, not trying to freehand my lines, just drawing my lines following the shape of the spoon as it exists. And then that's looking at, at the difference between the real spoon and the lines is going to tell me where to go. Brilliant. That, that's a great idea. Great suggestion. One quick suggestion too is um, I find that if I take photographs of them, then I see the wonkiness a lot better. And similar to what Kevin was saying is trying to get a new perspective is if you take a photograph and you go to correct it, you can flip the image. So then you can flip it back and forth and that can help um, as well. Yeah. These are nice. great ideas. Thanks everybody. We do that in jewelry with looking at the um, piece through the mirror. So when you see the mirror image of your piece, um, you, you have this left right thingy yeah. off. And uh, yeah, that's the same like switching the image from this type to that type, the, that, the other side. Excellent. All right. Well, great job, Joan. Fantastic, beautiful spoons. Um, and thanks everybody for all your wonderful suggestions. There's some great tips and tricks there that I haven't tried in the past that I'm going to be definitely doing because I too have struggled with that symmetry and with the smoothness and seeing where there's the imperfections along the edges of my spoon. So that suggestion in particular, Julian, I, I'm definitely gonna be using that. Um, okay, who would like to go next? Wave a hand, please. All right, Peter and then Brad and then Annika. Hey everybody. Um, I, made, I, I posted um, <clears throat> the uh, photo of uh, two that I made, but I made six in total. Um, let me just show each one. So these are the three I did in Walnut. Um, I did milk painting on these and distressed it a little bit. I just like the way these look. Um, wow, that red is particularly striking. Yeah, so you, I just did a base coat of um, black and then just came over with the red and then you, you sand it yeah. off and move back some of the red. That's really the, nice. Yeah, so three like this. One, starting with my first one, by the way, I didn't look at the template carefully and I have a, you can see it's got two humps. <laughs> one. Nice. Um, 
And I like the points of contact, by the way. So it does, it touches on each one. So it, it was a George spoon, so it had to do that. that was Very one. nice. We're gonna let that go. And then I did one in plum. It's kind Ooh. of hard to see. Nice green. Thank Beautiful. You. That is gorgeous. Thanks. And then I got two I'm working on still. I'm painting these. These were low quat. These are also my uh, KH Green Challenge entries because of the, uh, the wonderful grain you get in uh, low quat. Um, and this, I'm just going with a basic um, color here. I still have the tape on them. I'm still painting them blue. Yep. So, Beautiful. And I used a spoon mule. Um, I've had it for a while. And George inspired me to make those modifications he talked about, and it really helped. I did the two blocks. And I did exactly as, as he advised George, a great advice to paint them. So you lose them when you, you can find them in the chips in the bottom. Yeah. I can attest to that working. Um, but yeah, uh, a, great, a great challenge. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, kudos to George as, as, uh, as always a great little spoon. I can't wait to try and sell them. Awesome. Beautiful work. Fabulous job, Peter. Thanks. All right, uh, what did I say? I said it was gonna be Brad next, right? And then Annika. Okay, so let me see. It could be Brad, Brad next. Okay, so I made five. I got some others under, okay, I guess I am unmuted. Uh, I made five so far, I've got others under works. I started out with some hard maple, um, sugar maple. Nice. And um, this one curved really funny. <laughs> oh, wow. It, uh, it really curved on me. Um, which is okay, but it, it's, it doesn't have any crank. It's too flat. So I like this one and it's relatively thin, but that's okay with maple. I made another one and I had a crack I had to get rid of, but this one got really thin as I think you can see. Yeah, the translucence, yep. Yeah. You could read a newspaper through that, I think. Wow. But it's sugar maple, so it's still, I'm gonna just use it. You know, it's yep. good for a walk. There's a little more crank, but it doesn't have an, any swoop to it. And then I made one that was actually according to what I thought the uh, template work looked like. Um, so it has a little more swoop, but it doesn't. Um, I, then I saw that George had left quite a lot more meat down here and yeah. I had not attempted the, the little hook. This one is in, um, this is yellow birch, sapwood. Beautiful, and wood. really wow, beautiful. that is gorgeous. Really hard wood really tough, not quite as hard as maple, but um, pretty tough. And then I made one that was actually according to plan. So this is the one with the sexy girl curves and uh, it, 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 it keeps reminding me of uh, Rita Hayworth's leg or something like that. Um, <laughs> but uh, so I made a pretty big spike and then, um, and this is cherry, but it's cherry that had been sitting around long enough that the sapwood has already discolored so I did yeah. really work on getting it balanced, but it doesn't have the same. And, um, you know, I kind of do this facet thing on the back. With yeah. It, so that they have little sort of chevrons going down towards the handle. So this one's the most true to form. And then I, and then I made a slightly bigger one. This, this one's 13 inches long and a um, little deeper, um, got rid of the, swoop but i made it really wide so that i can do some drawing or some artwork on here nice. I, I have the need to do that for a spoon so this one could be used to um swat flies or to paddle a canoe <laughs> it's it's fairly large uh like an unruly you, kid <laughs> be great for a church supper where you're scooping out you know um what do you call it you know shepherd's yeah. pie or something yeah but I love the shape, so I really want to do more. And I do have a spoon mule. I do have a shave horse and a spoon mule. And I first used it on this one. And what I've got to talk to George about is my spoon mule. I got to modify it. I, I, I built it as a head that I can take off my shave horse and pop it on. And um, as a prototype about five years ago, and I need to make some improvements. One of which is my legs are too short and they also go too wide. So I've got to <laughs> modify the head build a new one so I can use it without practicing for the Olympics, <laughs> doing, doing splits. Nice. But, um, but that really did help with this. And I have never figured out how to use my spoon mule, how to get a 
tough enough hold that I could then really go at the bowl with a gouge or something the way George does. Yeah. So I got to work on that. But I had a lot of fun. Thank you, George. Beautiful. I love this design. I'm going to make a bunch of these. I like to make, I guess, big serving spoons more than anything else. And yeah, um, I, I do like the, the jazzy curves. And um, yeah, that's exactly what I'm aiming for. I'm going to Beautiful. Sure we'll make more. Cool. Awesome. Fantastic job, Brad. Well done. All right, Annika. Yes, hi everybody. So, um, yeah, this was my first um, cooking spoon ever. So <laughs> I procrastinated for about two and a half weeks because I dreaded the long handle and the big shape. Um, yeah, but then I started and I almost finished one. Uh, awesome. it, turned out, it turned out a bit flat, but really uh, nice. Yeah, I gave it a really long handle. I like that. And um, this one is uh, birch, so yeah, it's pretty pale in color. So I'm gonna give it some color or chip carving, I think. So yeah, and I'm just right now carving uh, the second one, which nice. is nice, more, more curved to it, but it's not finished and then I have some more so <laughs> yeah Beautiful. I definitely like the I like the template a lot and uh, yeah thank you Georg for for encouraging us to do things like that so I've never <laughs> yeah, never tried that um, yeah to do something big without the spoon mule and yeah but I want to build one now <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely for these larger forms, having the spoon mule makes it a lot easier to hog off a lot of wood quickly. If you don't have that, you got to go further, I think, with your, and I never do because I always get timid about it. Um, with my axe work, I never go quite as far as I, I really probably ought to go with the axe work, which then leaves a lot of wood to still have to remove with the knives. And that's definitely tiring on the hands. So, uh, it's funny when um, Brad was talking about uh, his spoon mule and spreading, like I was trying to put a lot of pressure on mine, you know, like while I was trying to uh, hog out the bowl. And that's when my, my, the arm on my spoon mule cracked while I was away last weekend. And I, I had intended to take all three days that I was away and do nothing but uh, number 20s. And I was, I was hoping to come back with like 10 to 12 number 20s, you know, completed. And I managed to get three done because on the second spoon before I was even through with the muling, my, my mule broke. <laughs> so I was back to, to axing and, and carving it all off by hand. And it's, a, it's tiring. It is tiring. These big forms, they can, you know, it takes a lot, it can take a lot out of you, depending it, on the wood. Yeah, it definitely takes more time. And, um, but what surprised me was that uh, the handle that's perfectly fine to do because when you do yeah. like the, the shin grip and you can just yeah do that but the bowl that definitely took me some time so yeah especially the back the back of the bowl and i tend to leave mine like i said pretty chunky so i i just because i'm timid about removing a lot of wood on there because i'm afraid i'm going to screw it up or or crack it or, or whatever or with the axe um so yeah Awesome. Well, great job. Thank well you. done, you. <laughs> All right. Let me uh, jump back into the gallery here so I can see everybody. All right. I see Sean's got his hand up, and then I've got Kevin. And then Rachel. So um, thanks, uh, Chuck. Uh, so George, uh, wonderful, wonderful template. I so enjoyed this. And uh, like many of you, I, I generally almost carve daily. And in the fall, I was really starting to get some really uh, big hand in, uh, impact on my hands. And I thought mm. I was going to get into some trouble. Um, so I did invest in uh, the plans for a spoon mule and a tuca cam and a draw knife. And uh, George, uh, this was a perfect storm of a beautiful design, uh, sexy spoon, uh, an enthusiastic spoon carver with relatively pain-free hands because of those big tools. I really enjoyed it. So I made uh, quite a few. Um, here's a butternut, not finished yet. And uh, here's a, an ebony spoon that's also butternut. 
And I'm really happy oh. with those first. Nice. Really so, cool. So much fun. Okay. I really enjoyed your video too, George. Uh, it was so so um, enlightening and educational. So thanks so much. I really thumbs up. Nice job on the ebonizing. That's gorgeous. Yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, Shonda, do you have to use tannins to like pre-stain that to get the ebonizing to go that black or is the butternut just naturally tannin high? It is tannin okay. high. I just coated wow. it three times um, okay. and then a fixture, just some top oil on it and it just really makes it uh, really quite pretty. That's incredible. I've tried ebonizing before and it turns into like kind of a black with a little bit of ash gray speckling, but that is flawless. It almost looks like it's the, uh, uh, what's the thing that Louis does a lot? The shellac type thing. Oh, Arushi, the Arushi yeah. lacquer. Like it's that black. It's really beautiful, Sean. Yeah, I'm really thrilled with it. Thanks, folks. All right, Kevin, I believe we said you were going next. Yeah, so uh, I can't say enough good things about George. The very first picture that I have of me on Rise Up and Carve was me with George. It was January two years ago. Um, and he's one of the first people I think where my he began, you know, our spoon, our our spoon friendship developed into a real friendship. And I look forward to at some point, George is in America or I'm in Germany, and I think then we can do some challenges in real life. Um, so yeah, George is a constant on Rise Up and Carve. He's online a lot, and he's a very constant personality and presence and encouragement. He's got lots of advice and expertise. But he's always in a he's always in a good mood, or at least what passes for a good for for a good mood in Germany. Um, <laughs> and he, I think, because he's not like an effusive complimenter who either talks constantly or says awesome all the time. I don't think people see how encouraging and positive George is all the time. Yeah, um, absolutely. And. Uh, so I've spent a year and a half, two years now, hanging out with George a couple of times a week. And I think it's amazing that I have friends in other parts of the world. Um, I tend to do a lot of like Instagram and Zoom based challenges or um, wacky ongoings or whatever. And George is always part of them. Um, <laughs> we, did, we did the tiny spoon challenge. And I don't know if you know, but Recently, someone became the record holder for uh, carving the world's tiniest wooden spoon. And my tiny spoon is smaller than that one. So I could be the record holder, except George's is smaller than mine. So George <laughs> is the current record holder, in my opinion, for having carved the tiniest spoon in the world. Um, so is it worth uh, challenging you both now then? What's that? Can we challenge you both now to apply? You just yeah, I want to apply, apply click and apply button it's first fine. so that I can hold the record yeah. for a little while before well, George applies and beats me. Or I'll just have both, to find a smaller one. Both of or, you know now, so just do it. <laughs> or a bigger ruler. Um, <laughs> so I was already carving shapes that were kind of like George's shapes because I was trying to break myself of the eating spoon habit and carve some cooking spoons. So I was already carving some spoons that were kind of reminiscent of George's. So when we eased into the challenge, I already had what I thought was some idea of what makes the George spoons the George spoons. Um, and I have one here that's still heavily influenced by me and m m m my aesthetic, but I got the, the sap wood here and here, like George does. And I noticed something when carving George's spoons that his front of the bowl doesn't come back up like a half pipe. It kind of, there's a half pipe here and here, but then the front just goes out. So that's an interesting aspect to Georgia Spoons. And then that lowers the crank and you have to draw the shoulders back. This isn't the best example, um, but just some interesting things I discovered. And then there's a grain change here, which I don't do in any of my regular spoons, but because of this, pot hook there's also a grain change here and here so there's grain changes all over Georgia spoons um, in interesting ways that mm. were not intuitive at first and were sticking points but then the more of them I carved the more I just got used to that and it didn't become an issue um, so I carved three let's see I carved three or four George spoons in different sizes because he said it was 
good at every size and he carved enough of them to prove that. So here's my kind of standard George cooking spoon. And he helped me with the shape to try to get it because particularly his, his, his bowls, all of my bowls end up looking like kind of a triangle. But this one I think is the closest to George's shape. I went a little overboard on the swoopiness, but I also like how that pot hook makes it helpful to hold in a different way. I think I was just, I would just keep my spoons octagonal or make them ace or, 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 or make them asymmetrical. But I think that pot hook like thing makes it really cool to hold um, and probably helpful to hold if people are having trouble with their with their with their grip so that might be an interesting way for the to provide assistance for people with their kitchen spoons um then i carved a small one which i haven't shown to george yet i think this spoon is awesome i really enjoy this spoon so i carved a tiny spoon or a small spoon but i kept all the george elements but i kept the same height of swoop so as I shrunk the spoon down, it it it, it looks like the, the the like wave of swoop got some more extreme, but it has all the elements. It's got the sapwood here and here. It's got the pot hook. It's got the it's it's got the scoop front and the deep shoulders. So it was really fun to try to capture all the same elements in a mm. smaller spoon. And then also since George said this was good at any size. I carved a tiny one. So let's see, can you see it? Uh, <laughs> this one, I was unable to get the grain change in it, but I did get, I think you can see, I did get the pot hook. I don't know if you can see that it has the pot oh, hook. Yeah. yeah. So I think even though George carved 120 spoons, I think I carved the smallest one, George. Definitely. I predicted that George would have carved a smaller one by me by the end of this show and tell. So let's see. <laughs> I should probably not, not have said that to egg him on. But one thing I know George can't do before the end of the show and tell is carve a, <laughs> carve a larger 20 than me. If he can do this by the end of the show and tell, I'll be impressed because this took me a long time. I was also unable to capture the grain change in a spoon this big, but I was able to get the pot hook. Wow. And the and the swoop and the scoop front and the deep shoulders. So it's quite a uh he says it's good at every size. I think I'm gonna use this for like for like wood chips. I don't know what I'm gonna use it for. But use it for pizza. Yeah, oh I could use it for pizza. Oh, it's not flat enough though. <laughs> But this Very is cool. what I was working on you have to bring it with, last with, night trying with to keep it off camera. And it was really a challenge because every time I would turn the spoon around, I would be like, oh, I was trying to not show it on, <laughs> on Rise Up. <laughs> so anyway, those are my those are my four different sizes of George spoons. Awesome. That was fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Really, really. Well, I should well also done. say just about George's philosophy of spoon carving. When I met George, he immediately talked about how his jewelry work is really precise. So he likes his spoon work to be kind of like flowing and explorative and asymmetrical. And George seems to come from a different tradition than the Swedish spoon tradition, at least in his philosophy of spoon carving. And it really serves, I think, as I don't want to say a counterpoint, but a good, I guess, additional point of view to incorporate into your spoon carving. So if you haven't had a chance to hear George talk about spoon carving and the way he likes to do it, sometime when you're alone with him on Rise Up, just ask him and then he'll talk for a while. And he really does a good job of explaining what he likes about spoon carving. And it's interesting to keep alternative views in your mind. I think it you know, helps diversify your own practice and your perspective. Absolutely. Fantastic. Great job, Kevin. Thanks. <laughs> That's smooth. Yeah, you like that, George? I kept this one a Definitely. secret. I kept this one a secret from you, and this one a and secret from you, and this one a secret from you. 
Oh, oh this I was wondering where you are the whole time the last weeks. <laughs> oh, this was just this was just yesterday. This big spoon. I spent a lot of time on this yesterday. So Sean made earrings that are d that are d dangly. Mine, I think, could be a stud. You just insert it in, and the pot hook would help. I think to hold it. <laughs> it could be it could be an earring stud. There you go. An earring stud for a stud. Oh, <laughs> that. oh awesome. All right. That well, that was so entertaining. I completely forgot who I said was gonna go next. Rachel, is it you? Okay. All right. You're up, Rachel. Let me spotlight you. If she has a if she has a spoon larger than mine, I'm gonna be really upset. Don't worry. <laughs> It was it was hard enough motivating myself to do a spoon this big because I I so much loved uh, George's demo. I loved the spoon mule. I was I was absolutely set on making one, and I've got all of its wood. I just haven't quite got round to putting it together. So that meant that I put off starting my um, spoon because I didn't want to do it by hand. I wanted it to be a spoon mule, but I eventually got around to doing it, um, and. Um, yeah, it was interesting. I don't normally go tangential and I didn't really have wood that was very suitable for um, showing that that tangential, but I didn't enjoy carving it. <laughs> and I didn't enjoy carving it because all of me wanted to be sitting at a spoon meal trying to do it properly. And I think one thing I learned was that the shape is dictated by the method. Um, and it was hard, therefore, to imitate the shape without being able to imitate the method and that irritated me um, but the outcome I'm pleased with and in a way I'm quite pleased with the fact that I'm going to eventually get my spoon wheel done and I'll do it again then um, but what I did enjoy doing was some was some really tiny little um, 20s that you can barely see there but uh, I thought they were just asking to be made into into some sort of jewelry so so a necklace was what I I, uh, I went for Cool. And awesome. uh, you, you did really well on your spoon. So it, you really captured this swoopy something. So mm. we... it was really helpful because I had one of your spoons. So although it wasn't the same template, it was, you know, your style of carving is embodied in your spoon. So it was useful just to be able to, um, you know, have it in my hand while I was trying to do something that was similar. And I, it did really help. Yeah, thank you that you tried. <laughs> really nice. Beautiful job, Rachel. Okay. Absolutely spectacular uh, pendant there. I love it. <laughs> All right. We slip back to the gallery view. And who would like to go next? John in Scotland. Let me uh, spotlight you real quick. How are we doing? Well, I was a bit late to this as well because was busy, so eventually I got the spoon, spoon mule out, and I've done that one, and that's Rowan. This is it's not quite as swoopy, this is, but it's actually finished. And then this morning, because I got the times wrong, because you went to a bit earlier for the Pacific Coast, I was on here earlier, so uh, I started that one, which is nice. It's that's, that's more like the template with a little swoopy bit. And then we went to this one. And it's the same as Sycamore, but it's got this weird sort of flex through it. It's just plain Sycamore of a tree that I cut with a chainsaw mill. And this is just an off cut from it. Nice. And, and number four is still just a... Uh, but these last three, because my spoon mule is just out there in a semi-open enclosure and it's bucketing from the heavens today, these were all done just with an axe and a knife. So, and I think because I've used the axe a lot more, I can get through them quicker than I use the spoon mule and a draw knife. So it's, it's <laughs> I think I've just been that used to use an axe right close to the line and it's just as quick. Uh, and uh, that's me finished, that's it, they're all done. Awesome. Great Beautiful. job. There's also, it means here, <laughs> there's a massive mess, absolutely everywhere. <laughs> because of 
cut so much of them just with a knife inside because it's so wet outside. Nice. <laughs> All right. Fantastic job, John. All righty then, who has yet to go? All right, we've got Suzanne, we've got Morgan, and then Kaylin, and then Jody. Suzanne, Morgan, Kaylin, Jody. All right, so let me spotlight, remember that, because I'll probably forget it. <laughs> All right, here we go, Suze, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> you, you seem to have some dangly bits. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Just a quick check. Can you hear me? Barely. Barely. Okay. Because my the speaker of my computer actually broke during uh, George's demo. So, yeah. I'm oh, no. Using... That's why I haven't been on Ruach lately. But very quick. This is my spoon. Nice. <laughs> what kind of wood? Every slime, best food. Okay. Yeah, just what I had. I it's like actually this got. It's actually got prettier grain than I typically associate with with lime and basswood. Really nice. Yeah. Good. I like that the handle swoops up a bit at the end. Yeah, that's uh, something for me too. Yeah, I only make this one. <laughs> nice. The earrings, the earrings are fantastic. Well done. <laughs> it's just cardboard. I made them in the last half hour. <laughs> <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Well, card, cardboard is wood, just in a different form. Exactly. <laughs> they totally don't look like cardboard. They look no, great. No, they really don't. Yeah. They're golden, even. <laughs> nice. Excellent job. Well done. All right. So uh, what did I say? Who, who did I say was going to be next? Morgan? All right, Morgan. There, I'm unmuted. Um, so I'm, I'm a little behind because I took vacation for the first time this week in a long time. So I have, I have three, one that had a, a really big split. <laughs> So now it's going to be a spatula, but it still has swoopiness on the on the handle in George form. And then I tried to make a flatter, bold one with not a, a whole lot of depth there. And then one that I really exaggerated on to try and get more of a serving spoon. But I had to flip it the other, I had to flip it an improper way to get it. So I'm hoping it survives. Who knows? Um, I haven't finished them yet because I've I've been a little distracted from carving this week, seeing my family. But this was just an extraordinarily fun form for me. I even when I've made cooking spoons, I never make the bowls this big. I never make a handle quite as as swoopy. I've never added a whatever you call it, you know, a spoon in pot preventer. Pot rest. Um, <laughs> And I just, I really enjoyed this form. I think it's really beautiful. And mm. I've already axed out a couple of others to make a set of salad servers. So thank you for such a nice form. And um, it was nice to see your tutorial too. I finally actually got to watching the parts that I missed and learned a lot about axing too, not only spoon mealing. So Absolutely. thanks, George. Welcome, welcome. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> what is flipping something in an inappropriate way? I don't get it. Um, it apparently is not showing up super well, but I, I have it bark side down. Um, you can't really see the grain in this maple too well, but the, the reason it was a really narrow, like a really narrow log, and so I couldn't get it bark side up. And so that's why this spoon split out the the top of the bowl has all of the short rings mm -hmm. and was just splitting out. So this one's fully dried and hasn't cracked. So I'm I'm feeling more confident that as long as I'm careful around the rim, it should be okay. Yeah, bark side up tends to be 
uh, a little stronger than bark side down, uh, you know, because of that short grain, unless you're working with a, a, a crook or a, you know, a bent, you know, spoon um, in general, but hey, give it a go, you know, you never know. Sometimes they're surprisingly strong and, and not as uh, fragile as, as some would, would lead us to think that it, it's going to inevitably be, which it's, you know, not at all. So beautiful, excellent job, Morgan. All right, let me uh, flip back out to the gallery and then Kaylin was next. So yep. let me spotlight you. Awesome. Take it away, Kaylin. Well, I was really excited about this template challenge because I've been trying to mimic George's gracefulness in his spoons. And I think I did a decent job, but I think there's such a beautiful way that like the bowls pinch to the handle that mm. I wanted to just start with the bowls only and looking at asymmetrical versus symmetrical. So my jewelry for George is a set of asymmetrical <laughs> bowls, a right and a left. So I've got my little George jewelries here. Thank you, George, for the inspiration. <laughs> Awesome. And then I wanted to. So funny. <laughs> Those are gorgeous. Those Thank are you. They're, they're apple wood. Those are beautiful. Yeah, cool. they're not well. I would recommend if you're ever going to try these to leave like handles on them and cut the handles. <laughs> they were very difficult to carve as actual bowls. <laughs> Um, but I didn't cut myself, so that's the success. You know, those look awfully similar to spoon fishing lures. Oh, <laughs> that would actually, spinning. yeah, that would be perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so then I, I, them I like swim, Kaylin. Huh? That's right. <laughs> Let them while you swim. Well, they they um, flip a lot when I walk, just because they're not very aerodynamic. So, but in the water, they would probably spin perfectly. <laughs> Yeah, but you might attract large sharks. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> um, so then I worked on a couple of spoons. The first one is just to work on kind of that standard template shape, um, no mm. real variation from that. I still am working on this pinch the bowl. It's um, good, but not quite George style. And then I always end up including a bit of a dolphin hump just because it's something a style that I, I seem to ax out without even thinking about it. So this one's in plum um, with the template exactly drawn on as well as I could. And then I wanted to kind of take George's influence of looking at a template, but going a little different. So I did asymmetric and then I widened the bowl a bit mm -hmm. and widened one of the curves. Um, and then I did add a pot hook or a pot kind of stabler to this one. And so this one's out of maple and turned out quite nice. Beautiful. That's a really nice one. Thank you. Yeah. And then I wanted to get a little creative. These long skinny handles are super nice for cooking, but I've been interested in the idea of like small pass around bowls at a dinner party and how to not have a spoon flip out of it. So I made what I'm calling a short George. And so this one has a super wide chunky handle. Um, no dolphin on it, but this one's for like side dishes when we have dinner mm. parties again. And this one I think turned out quite nice. This one I'm really happy with. And then I was thinking about another form and then I was like, what about a jar spoon? I need to make a George jar. And so I've got a George jar spoon here with nice. a teeny tiny little hook so that you can grab it and pull it out of like a jam jar when it's stuck with all the jam. Brilliant. And then I wanted to try and incorporate George's style a little bit into my standard eating spoon. And so um, this one, oh, this light is so bright. This one is a slightly George inspired, but slightly still my eating spoon style. Mm -hmm. Nice. So those are my, my George spoons. Thank you, George. These were a lot of fun to, to carve. Um, and I had a less busy week at work, so I was able to get a few done this week, and it was a lot of fun. Really oh, nice. Why? I think you really picked up what why my um, initials were or what I wanted to. So really nice. Yeah. Cool. Well done, Kaylin. Excellent job. Fantastic variation in all of it. Really, really nice. All right. Uh, there was who did I say? Jody. Jody was next. That's it. Here we go. Let me spotlight you, Jody. You just got to unmute yourself. Yep, you got it. Yep. 
so here's my number 20. And I, I really like how graceful it is. And I feel like every time I do a template, I'm always learning something. And for sure, um, I'm always learning about, you know, every little thing like studying maybe some of the images of George's spoons, like where he has the facet going around or how it comes down. Um, just looking at how much wood is left and where. And um, I was also surprised how comfortable the handle bump is to hold mm -hmm. because it just fits in between two fingers. So like some other people said, it's actually makes it more comfortable than just having like a skinny handle. And um, I think it's really graceful and I'm already looking forward to um, incorporating some of the ideas into my own spoons. And for my jewelry for this, I have a spoon ring. That nice. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, that's fantastic. That's a sweet that handle. Was challenging. Yeah. Did you did so, you find did did you find the, the steam bending difficult to achieve? <laughs> Pushing it right to the edge there. <laughs> so anyway, it it fits and um that's awesome. And I wear it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely awesome. Well done, Jody. <laughs> Beautiful <Thank> spoon. <laughs> Thanks, it was a lot of fun. All right. All right, who else? All right, Oren, and then Michael, and then Craig. Oh, and Michael, Craig, Patrice. <laughs> Remember that, don't forget. This is mine. Um, I try usually to stick to the template and uh, follow follow the rules. So I did this with uh, my spoon mule, which I, I rarely use. Um, George said something in his uh, demo. He says, the reason I do these things is because I'm just lazy. And uh, it's, it's obviously the opposite because whenever you ask George a question, he'll go across town on his bicycle to get a certain tool to show you. So laziness is not, is not one, one of the Things that would, uh, say 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 George George is, um, so I tried. I got up off my chair and went and picked up the spoon mule and actually did it uh, according to George's uh, style. And I really enjoyed it. And since I made it, I've been going back to the spoon mule a lot more. I obviously had to put um, the snail as the stopper back here. So That's fantastic! Oh, what a beautiful spoon. <laughs> it, it, it seems so natural when it, when it's sitting on the side, right? Um, uh -huh, when you're cooking great. and then it's just sitting up on top. That's this awesome. Is, this is a uh, spalted pecan, um, which uh, the branch just fell recently from these trees that I'm sitting under. Um, and uh, I made another one during during the demo. This one is uh, peach, which is wow. got a gorgeous um, cage grain challenge winner written all over it. Wow, without a doubt. Yeah. Now, shit, this, the snail must have gotten away somewhere. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, there you uh, go. Wonderful. So this, is, this is my little George Joel, George jewelry. It's it's a little lapel pin <laughs> snail nice. that I can tack this on. Awesome. To uh, and tag whoever I want, um, and I really enjoyed it. Thank you, George, for uh, <laughs> this inspiration. As always, <laughs> what, what? I'm really. I'm excited to see where that snail moves every time you log into Carve on Rise Up. It's right. Gonna be on your shelf <laughs> it's like the elf on the shelf that's going to keep moving to some new location. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. <laughs> Wonderful. You even get the nice keel on it on your eating spoon. Or it's, it's, is it an eating spoon, the first one? Or is it more like a serving thing? Or is this just a spoon? This is exactly the size that you gave the template. You're always surprised how little it is, but this is actually the template. When you make them, you make them this big. 
but this is. I think you're just a ginormous human, and by scale, <laughs> that thing <laughs> looks tiny. Another thing I wanted to point out: I made one of them the profile that you usually do, George, and the other one, I made it as a swoopy, one direction uh, spoon. So this one just goes this way. Yeah. This one so there's lots cool. of different ways to play around with this shape. I really enjoyed it. That's Very it. cool. I'm out. <laughs> All right. I told you guys to remember. I forget. Who do we say was next? It was Pete, uh, Michael? That's it. All right. Let's go, Michael. All right. Yeah. So uh, say a couple things, but um, you know, I've always used uh, <clears throat> your bandsaw, you know, for carving out spoons. But <clears throat> excuse me. Um, based on George's videos, et cetera, I was actually inspired. I went to order a Robin's wood axe. And then very fortunately, one of my fellow Seattle spoon carvers, he said he had a Robin's wood axe that had a faulty handle that it was replaced, um, but he was happy to give me the one that needed a new handle. So once I get a handle on that new Robin's wood axe, I'm gonna be trying some axing, axing stuff out. So thanks for the inspiration on that, George. Um, but in the meantime, uh, this is what I did. It's a piece of silver maple. Um, so it's tangent, or it's not, uh, it's radial, or not tangential, um, whatever the other one is. Um, and for me, um, what I really thought was interesting was, you know, playing around with uh, the way that bowl, the finish of the bowl, Kevin talked a lot about that, how the, the bottom of the bowl doesn't swoop up. Um, so that was really fun and, you know, doing it with the, gouge you know it's you got to be really careful and make sure you don't just chop the end of it off um but i had a lot of fun you know playing around trying to get that you know so it was where where i liked it and ironically enough i do a lot of asymmetrical stuff but um you know this one it actually turned out to be one of my more symmetrical spoons so um that was also <laughs> kind of fun um i ended up um it's kind of cool um, I couldn't, it, it was invisible when I started, but uh, it turns out there's a little inclusion um, that I uncovered, you know, as it was curving through it. So um, it seemed really solid. So I just decided to go with it and left it on the back of the handle. Um, didn't do the bump. Um, you know, I just, uh, you know, it's pretty typical of my style just to do nice, smooth, rounded uh, stuff. So, but yeah, George, thanks well, so much for all your work. Um, and uh, yeah. Really nice template. Thanks. Nice spoon too. Really nice. Thank you. Beautiful job. Excellent, Michael. Really, really nice. Thanks. I like that little bark inclusion there. Did your handle bend, do you think, because of that, like as it dried because of that inclusion? No, you know, it's pretty typical you... for me. I always, you know, there's always a curve in my handles. I didn't, I didn't okay. see any, I didn't see any extra sway um, because okay. of the, so, but yeah. But yeah, yeah, I wasn't okay. sure. I've had a couple spoons where I had like a knot right at that same point, point, and as it dried, it actually curved the handle because of it. Yeah, um, no, I, so I've, that's why I just definitely, wasn't sure. I've definitely seen that too, but not in this case. But yeah. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. Great job. And then Craig was next, right? Okay. Craig, let me spotlight you and unmute yourself. You got to turn your, yep, you got it. Going up. Right, uh, nice to get that thing. And I really, really enjoyed doing that, George. That's a really nice shape. Didn't think I would enjoy it, but I did. And I managed to get a bit of draw knife work done using a wee mini vice. So I think definitely getting a spoon wheel on the to do list. Yeah. Uh, really like the pothole bit. Unfortunately, it's a bit of old that was really fresh. And when it dried, it's went a bit wonky. Because <laughs> <laughs> a knot showed up on the back. Yeah. Clear on the front. So I think that interfered with it when it was drying. Interesting. Oh, it's fine. Really like the shape. Some nice sexy curves on it. Yeah. Definitely more of them. Uh, that was it. Yep. Uh, and keeping up with the, the jewellery theme. I never done a, a small spoon, and I had a small snout slide knife I made years ago. <laughs> but I thought recently doing sheaths. I don't know if you've seen them. I thought I'd make a wee sheath for it. <laughs> an actual leather wrapped sheath. 
Yes, an actual leather wrap sheath in it. Uh, it, it actually clicks really... into place. That's <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> it was some nice. I couldn't stitch the back of it. So I just dotted that in. But there's a wee hole got there. Hilarious. Wonderful. That is awesome, Craig. <laughs> that was my dirty make. That <laughs> 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 But cheers, no, a lovely spin, mate. Cheers. It looks yeah. like a lot of fun. <laughs> awesome. Well done, you. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Who did we say was going to go next? Patrice. That was right, Patrice. All right. Well, I really enjoyed doing this template, George, and you've been so helpful in suggesting so many great tools for me. Like I've got a jewelry saw, I got jewelry files. I, you uh, encouraged me to handle my knife blades. So I was able to buy my own knife blades and start handling those. So that's been great. So um, I was thinking of all those things as I made the spoon and I really enjoy the form. Oh, so beautiful. And I made it out of a piece of cherry. It's got some um, interesting color here all the way around. Mm. That's beautiful kind of neat nice. and then I put my maker's mark there in the back but yeah it, it was hard I I'm not great at axing so again lots of whittling on this one and then it's about at 90 percent scale because I didn't have a piece of wood big enough and then I also wanted to make a jewelry sized version so I'm not quite done with it yet here it is <laughs> Oh, nice. And uh, <laughs> I want to add it to my jewelry. Uh, also, <laughs> my little axe, which was inspired by, I think, Craig. Craig had one. And I just thought that oh. was so cool. Yeah. And, <laughs> and jewelry for George, you know, like, because you make beautiful miniatures, you make jewelry, it's just perfect. And so um, mm -hmm. once I have my spoon, I'll probably convert this to a set of earrings. And nice. um, that'll be very cool. But yeah, so thank you so much, George. It was really a beautiful form. And I'm already thinking who gets to have this nice spoon. So I have my nice. mother-in-law, my sister-in-law. <laughs> you have to carve some more. <laughs> I know, I know. But I think I think it's just such an elegant shape it and is. because you could use it for cooking and for serving, I think it's going to get a lot of use. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's just, um, yeah, it's just gorgeous. So thank you, George. Thank you, too. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> Fantastic job, Patrice. Well done. Excellent. Okay. Uh, who has not gone yet? Who still needs to go? All right, Willow. And then Gavin. Okay, um, as most of you know, I have, I have not um, shown up at this time because I usually don't get up at 5 a.m. <clears throat> and so thank you for putting the time back so it was within my reach because 4 a.m. might not be as doable for me. And some of you may know also that I have never carved a Rise Up and Carve template yet. And when I saw George's, I decided I'm gonna start doing these, and so I awesome. um, thank you for that, George, because that was this what was an honor <laughs> to okay. me, and um, yeah, so it was really fun. I hope to get to quite a few of the others. I printed out a bunch of them, um, my favorites, but it was this one really inspired me to start, and so I um, this is a piece of cherry, and. Um, the cherry, the cherry that I brought back from where my mom lives is, um, is really white compared to the East Coast black cherry. And I really, um, it's really, it's neat. I've, I've, um, I've done both radial spoons and tangential spoons with this, with this cherry. And um, it turns out really interesting and nice in both ways. Um, I didn't get quite as much color in the front as yours that way, but um, yeah. And I also started with too small of a piece of wood to get the swoop of the handle that I, that your template has. And um, so I'm carving another one. Um, I don't have the bowl 
out yet, but this one is, I'm gonna make this part thicker, I think, than the end of your template, but this one is um, radial, radial grain um, ash that's incredibly hard. And so I'm wishing I had a spoon mule right now, but I have to say, because of you, George, um, you know, I never, I never loved the axing part of making a spoon as much as the other parts. And after George told me once, like, I really, I really don't like the Robin Wood axe at all. I've never used one, but I, I don't like it. <laughs> and he put that thought in my mind and about within the month, I think, I um, found another ax and I bought it right away. And it's completely changed how I feel about axing and I really enjoy it. And I, and I ax down to like really close to my line and lighten things up a lot from with, with the ax. And so that's been, I had no idea that that could change my life so much. And, um, and so I have you to thank for that. <laughs> and, and I still want to get a spoon meal. I will. I'm so close to moving into my shop. And, um, and so next week, actually, I have to make the move from this um, spare bedroom into my actual shop. And I, I will start working on spoon meal. Nice. Congratulations on getting a shop. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so, yeah, I appreciate that. I just I love, George, when I'm carving with you when um, yeah, it's just you ask a tool question and you just get like the full. <laughs> it's I don't know. I just learned so much. I, I think I think dissertation is the word you're yeah, looking for. It's so <laughs> fascinating and great, and, and so that's been helpful to me in in more ways than just the axe situation. Um, and then I also did a little tiny. Um, um, uh, I guess that just experimenting with the grain, uh, you know, radial versus tangential, and um, and I carved a little a little wee bowl out of pear wood, and a spoon that goes with it. That's um, nice. radial and tangential and very translucent because it's pear wood, and so it's just a little a little bowl that sits like really that. Cool. Both, oh, out nice. of, both out of pear wood that I got from Tamir. I think he sent it nice. to me from a from a town in New York where I used to live. Um, it's where this piece of pear came from, which was kind of fun. Cool. So, nice. What town? Millbrook. Oh, yeah. OK, yeah. cool. It's Bradford pear from Millbrook. Um, and Very it just nice. looks so good radially. I think I just I love those little. Yeah, yeah. How scrapey it is. Um, so that was that was fun to make. And I don't know how many of these I'll make it to because it is, it is early yeah. <laughs> on one of the few days of the week I get to sleep in, but it's really fun to see everyone and see, um, yeah. Well, so. actually on that note, I'm gonna just make a quick little uh, plug here real quick. Our, our next spoon challenge is by Matt Day. The template is up and it's a bowl. So it's, um, and he's got a couple different sizes of bowls. So for any of you out there that are, you know, I've been itching to, to, you know, try carving bowls. This is going to be your opportunity. Um, not everybody might be able to do it because they might not have the right tooling or, or whatever, but Matt will walk us through his bowl carving process. Um, and we're going to have a demo of that on, got a blank, and I'll find the date and I'll announce it again later. But since you were just mentioning about your little bowl, I wanted to kind of go ahead and give the plug the, um, but we will have to shift the time, unfortunately, back to 8 a.m. for Matt's demo and for his uh, show and tell because he has markets that he has to get to by 10 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. So we're going <laughs> to shift it back to 8 a.m. So anyway, apologies for those of you out on the West Coast for that. Anyway, excellent job, Willow. Fabulous. Well done. Thank um, you. Thank you. Really nice. Who did I say was going to go next? I thought I had somebody else. Uh, oh, Gavin, thank you. Thank you, Gavin. The hand wave is required because I'm an idiot. <laughs> you got to unmute yourself. And it's good to see you've got your video working. Well, sort of. I've got a big square in the middle of it at the moment. There you go. Right. Um, yeah, I don't do um, many spoon challenges. Um, but this one I saw and I really liked. So thank you very much, George for the template. It's a wonderful template. And um, it was great fun to carve. Um, very different from what I normally carve. Very swoopy. And part of the reason I wanted to go for it was because I really wanted to make a spoon mule. 
um, which I never got round to doing. So um, there you go. But anyway, I got it right. Um, I got one done in the end and I'm pretty pleased with it. Yeah. Um, it's got some things that are not right and some things that I don't really like too much, but I think overall I'm pretty pleased with it. I don't see anything not right. <laughs> it looks fantastic, Gavin. I, I think particularly I like this scoopy front and normally I would make on my handles I would make them much more roundy so the top goes over and the bottom comes up um, so it's more sort of overly um, uh -huh. but I really tried to stick with a, a square sort of profile on this on the handle because I thought it looked nicer with the form um, and with the axing that I had to do because I never got round to making the spoon mule. Um, I don't think he's here today, but I just want to say thanks to Sean Warburton because he encouraged me to go a lot closer with the axe here mm. than I thought I was capable of doing. And it saved me a lot of um, hand whittling. Uh, I found I could get much closer to this curve. I don't normally do this swoopy handle. Um, so there's a lot of new things for me. And also this swoopy front is quite new for me. Um, but that I really like. That I will be bringing into other things, I think. So thank you very much, George. Nice. Um, you really nice. do. Really nice. Cool. Yeah. Really nicely done. Excellent job, Gavin. All right. Who has not yet had a chance to go? Who has a, a number 20 to share? All right. John in Denver. This is my third uh, spoon challenge. Uh, this is my first live show and tell. Awesome, welcome. Uh, welcome, just welcome. A great, just a great template. Um, I usually, for whatever reason, subconsciously get rid of the crank here. I just like the way a spoon, I like to swoop. So I had to really fight to, to keep this crank and I really like it. And, the whole swoop is nice. Um, uh, I've showed it to a couple people and they really like the um, the little bump. It's just great for your hand. So um, I really like that. George, this is just a great template. It's had a lot of fun. Thank you. I dragged out the spoon meal that's all dusty that I hadn't used forever and absolutely loved all the work. Um, this was my first um, piece of uh, material that I started with. It was a little tiny dark knot and it ended up turning into a canoe. So um, <laughs> I switched it. So I took me a little longer to get the second one, but um, I just wanted to submit my miniature. I, I'm working on a little bowl. Just nice. so I have Beautiful. That's it guys, thank you. Awesome. Great job, John, and welcome. Glad to have you here sharing live with us. Okay. Is there anybody else who's not yet had a chance to share who has a, a number 20 that they want to uh, talk about? Wave a hand if, if you've not yet gone. Ah, Ryan, there you are. I see you, my friend. Let me uh, spotlight you. Ryan with Mr. Cool Shades. I don't know about that. It's just sunny out, man. Come on. <laughs> All right. What is this? Okay. So I did two. Uh, one, I followed the traditional George flow, I suppose, the sexy curves. I gave it a little bit more of a high heel shape here. But this was fun. I have no idea what it this wood is. This was just some mystery. Both of them were. So I It's did, really you know, pretty wood. Edge Beautiful. George did a tangential, did a radial with the uh, asymmetry on this one, and then uh, I thought I needed something, so I ebonized the handle. But, uh, Ryan, I see you. you <laughs> we see, see you too. You, <laughs> you went Hello. away. Hello. Hello. Can you say hi to George. Hi. Hi, hi. So, uh, yeah, no, these were fun. Um, I wouldn't say it was like too far out of my wheelhouse. 
seemed pretty uh, straightforward and there was no decoration. So I really liked that. Awesome. So yeah, that's about it. I Excellent. See that. So beautiful I just spoon. want to give a, sorry, George, go ahead. No, yeah, just beautiful spoons. Really, yeah, the, the even nice is a really Ryan George thingy. Ryan, Ryan and George spoon, really cool. Cool, Thanks. really good hole. So I just want to give a quick plug. Ryan did a, an impromptu uh, demo of his spoon carving process this past week uh, with Kevin kind of helping to to like narrate and host and, and all of that. And that recording is up on YouTube and I've just not yet gotten a post put up on the, the Rise Up and Carve page. I did do a story about it, or actually I think I reposted uh, the story that Kalen had done about it. So thank you so much for doing that, Ryan. I've not yet had a chance to watch the whole thing. I only kind of watched a little bit in, but I'm really looking forward to checking that out. Yeah, it was so, a lot of fun. Thanks for, uh, thanks for posting that. Yeah, that, if it, anybody that, hasn't it, had a chance to see it yet, you're gonna wanna go check that out. Yeah, so I'm, I'm always telling everybody to use a spoon mule, and this video is a proof that you don't need a spoon mule. <laughs> yeah, I will say I actually did not use a spoon mule or anything. I think I actually <laughs> used one axe, one knife, and maybe two hook knives on these spoons. So I didn't really follow the George template at all. So these, these are an abomination. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. You don't need have a spoon plug, which is like watch. ridiculous. <laughs> when you go watch Ryan's uh, demonstration, try not to be scared away by the thumbnail. Okay. Thumbnail. The initial image is of my smiling face, so it's not. Oh, that's not I, thought that thumbnail. Thumbnail. <laughs> I thought he had like a black and blue actual thumbnail or something. <laughs> no, no, sorry. The thumbnail view that starts the image. Yeah, I, unfortunately, that was the like the, the cleanest image. I'll have to go and try and create a new thumbnail for it with from somewhere within the body of the, the video. The ones that they create by default were just not great ones to use. So, all right. Is there anybody else who's not had a chance to go yet and share their number 20? Okay, if not, then I am going to go ahead and jump in. Uh, so let me spotlight me. There I am, me. Hello, everyone. So number 20, I, um, I, was, I went away, as many of you know, to Spoon Camp uh, in New Jersey. With, um, Steve Antonucci, and, uh, I'm blanking on his last name. Um, they hosted a, an actual live get together. So I packed up my spoon mule. You're breaking up. You're breaking up, Chuck. Oh, all right. Well, is this any? No, it's just a sound, just a voice. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, your is coming in now. Oh, well, uh, not sure what I can do about that. Oh, that's better now. Okay. Anyway, um, so I went away to, I was just saying, I went away to Spoon Camp, uh, New Jersey last weekend, and I was all excited because I was planning to spend the entire entire three days, four days that I was there carving nothing but number 20s. And I packed up my spoon mule and I was all excited to just spend many hours every day wailing away on spoons. And second spoon I was working on, the spoon mule arm cracked. So the spoon mule became unused, unusable for the remainder of my time there. So everything was back down to doing it uh, without the mule, uh, which really slowed me down. But the first one that I did, I didn't get nearly enough swoopiness to it. Um, this is in just some white birch that I had gotten from a friend up in uh, New Hampshire. And um, I'm, I'm really impressed with how everyone picked up on, like I didn't do it, but keep, keeping the front edge of that spoon sort of curved, I did not do that. And um, I kept mine more flat uh, the way I kind of typically do. Um, but I'm going to go back now, and I'm going to try try uh, working some of that in. And I didn't get I didn't have enough depth in this one to really get it as swoopy as I would have liked, and as the template really calls for. But I was real pleased overall with the the spoon. I did get my bowl relatively thin, but as I had commented earlier before we really got going, um, it, it is translucent. You can't see it in this light, but um, and I thought I was going super thin. But when I went and actually compared it to one of the George spoons that I have, which is actually quite swoopy. Um, 
it it somehow feels less thin than George. Th George has like just this, I don't know. He he just like between the the neck to um, and the the handle to bowl transition, he just gets everything so incredibly thin looking. And I always feel like my stuff ends up coming out chunky looking in comparison. Um, so even though I'm trying to go super thin I, uh, on some of those, I never quite get there. But I was still overall very happy with this I as my think first. Even more difficult when, when you don't have so much crank to get that yeah. elegant and, and you really yep. manage that. So if you, I think what you did, you really managed in this low piece of wood, this swoop and elegance. So you did a really good job, job there, I think. Thank you. So then I was on the second one. So this was the one that I was working on when my, my mule cra arm cracked. So this one, oh, and th so the first one I did was asymmetric and it had no hook on the back. The second one I did, I ended up going symmetric and leaving the little pot rest hook thingy. Um, and like everybody else has said, it fits really beautifully into the fingers when you're holding on to that handle and it gives you quite a nice firm grip. So if, you know, when you're, if you're using it to cook and stir or, or just to serve, it gives you a nice firm grip on that handle. And I really like that hook a lot. Um, so this was another one in birch. I also got it relatively thin in the, the bowl. It's translucent, but it's still, this one is definitely chunkier than the first one because I wasn't hogging off <coughs> as much wood using the, um, spoon mule. So this one, I was back down to mainly just axes and knives. Um, so then I got a hold, there was some, uh, somebody there had some really nice fresh walnuts. So I decided for the, the third one and three was all I managed to actually do, but I will be going back and doing many more of these and keep trying uh, even more to get closer and closer to your form, George, because uh, as everybody else here has said, I, I just, I admire your spoon forms so much. Um, they're just, they're, they're really beautiful, really elegant looking and uh, something I really wanna go for in my own work on my spoons. Um, so I really wanna try emulating that more. So the third one that I did, however, was still quite chunky, but I added a new little feature, a reverse pot hook or oh, almost like, cool. like, like a little, uh, like a shark fin up on the top. And I was inspired to do that by uh, One Zesty Italian uh, on, as her Instagram handle, Tony uh, from out in California, who actually flew all the way out for our spoon camp. Um, and she had a, a small little serving spoon, which I bought. I don't have it down here to show it, but she had like this little, what she called a reverse keel on it. So it was on the top of the spoon rather than the bottom. And I was like, oh, that could be kind of interesting if it's offset with this hook because it would form a really nice place for your thumb to rest. And you can almost get like a bit of a, like a squeeze between the forefinger like wrapped around the bottom uh, rest and the thumb resting in that top rest. And it just gives you a really great grip. So nice. this was this really nice piece of walnut. I left this much chunkier. Um, it's similar, very similar to the very first spoon, cooking spoon that I bought from uh, Oliver Pratt in terms of its thickness. Uh, and it's my wife, that happens to be my wife's favorite cooking spoon because it's so sturdy. Um, and she, I mean, really, you know, when we do like deep pot chilies or stews, she likes having a nice big heavy cooking spoon. And so I had her try this handle and she loved it. So I think I'm gonna actually start incorporating that top little thumb uh, hook uh, along with this uh, pot rest into some other of my cooking spoon forms. But anyway, I, I, I feel like I haven't really quite yet gotten to the, the spirit of the George spoon. Um, and so, but I'm so happy to have a few of George's spoons in my possession. Um, so it's always great to have one that you can actually hold and go back to. And so I will be doing my best to try and get closer to that. I have managed to fix my mule it's there in the background. Uh, so I haven't tried it yet, but hopefully the, the repair, the glue repair will hold and I can get more after it. So in keeping with the jewelry theme, I felt like I had to do my little bit and I created my little set of pendants. 
So I've got a <laughs> uh, draw knife, oh, a Hans cool. Carlson axe, because that's the axe that George was using. <laughs> I've great. got my little, whoops, wrong hand, where is it? I'm confused left, right, uh, this side. There's my little number 20 spoon. Oh, there is. <laughs> and I got actually got quite a bit of swoopiness to it. Wonderful. And, and then I got a, uh, this hand, there it is, my little, uh, this is modeled after my daddy shark knife uh, from Sean Miller um, and his brother. <laughs> so that's my little miniature Sloyd knife. So I didn't, I tried getting a hook done and unfortunately the hook cracked because it's short wow. frame. Um, so unfortunately I'll, I'll have to go back and add a hook knife and maybe a Twica cam or something down the road. Uh, or maybe a carving gouge, a file gouge. That would be more in keeping with your uh, process here. So there's Wonderful. my there's my little jewelry uh, contribution to the festivities for today. And I just want to echo uh, everybody else's sentiments. George, thank you so much for uh, all of your enthusiasm, uh, your knowledge, uh, your just your presence on Rise Up and Carve. Uh, it's I, I count you uh, amongst <laughs> one of my better friends, surprisingly, uh, considering that we've never actually met, you know, in person. <laughs> and I hope that if you do manage to come over this summer uh, to come to uh, Pat's gathering, uh, okay, if, yeah, you, that would be if you intend to fly into New York, uh, I will be more than happy to come and pick you up. Uh, you have a place to stay if you want one here, and you, we can share a ride out to Pat's if you'd like, so. If flying anyway. is possible by then, I yeah, believe that. exactly. Here's here's hoping. Let's let's all all pray. Same so. applies to Chicago. You can fly here and road trip with Kyle and I. There you go. <laughs> you can go the other direction. <laughs> Just have so, to do it several times. That's right. You're gonna have all these people you have to get around to now in the United States to have to visit. The West Coast is gonna demand a, a George visitation. <laughs> all it's right. What what a stupid thing. Just carve us roads. <laughs> So fantastic job, everybody. Um, we are coming up, we're actually almost at the two hour mark. So I am not going to keep recording to go through the Instagram images. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop the recording uh, at this point, but I just wanna thank you all. Um, I do wanna, uh, as always, thank uh, Sunny for doing all of our, our PDF uh, template work and our website and getting everything posted up there. Thank you so much, Sunny. Uh, thank you, George, obviously, for our, our spoon template for this most recent challenge. And yes, I have to say, Sonny as well for that template. He helped me a lot. Really nice. Yes. Yeah, Sonny really uh, goes above and beyond the call of duty to try and uh, uh, get these things pulled together for us. So, a, a huge thanks to him. Um, so, right. So, the next challenge will be the bowl challenge that Matt Day is going to be leading us through. He, let me go pull up my note real quick. Uh, come on, where am I? Here we are. So the dates, uh, the demo will be May 22nd, Saturday, May 22nd at 8 a.m. Eastern time. So an hour earlier than we did this time, unfortunately. Um, and if you go, I'm gonna post a post up on, on the Rise Up account. Um, it's, he's got a website. It's Matt Day makes a bowl, all one word. Um, actually, there's a slash in front of that, and it's a bit.ly address. So B-I-T dot L-Y slash Matt, M-A-T-T, Day, D-A-Y, makes, M-A-K-E-S, a bowl, B-O-W-L, uh, all one word, run together. And up there on that site, he, he walks you through. He's got a whole um, tutorial about his process for bowl carving. So May 22nd, he will do it. It's more kind of a demo, but it's more or less going to be just talking through that and answering any questions that people have. Um, and then on June 5th, uh, that will be the show and tell uh, again at 8 a.m. for the bowl carving. So any of you who have been hoping to carve a bowl, here's, here's a great chance and an opportunity to do so. Um, we do have the potential for a uh, 22nd template. So Matt's will be the 21st. We do have a potential for a 22nd template uh, waiting to get that confirmed uh, from a UK carver, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, so good stuff coming down the pike. 
Um, and I just want to thank you all for your your you know presence here, your participation, your friendship, and this wonderful community that you have turned Rise Up and Carve into. So thank you all. Woo uh, thank you, bro, for all the stuff you do. Oh, thank you, George. All right. Stop recording.